Welcome subscribers and new viewers. Today you find me on the road to Odessa, Ukraine. Now this awful weather was experienced between Krakow, Poland and the Ukrainian border. I'm on my way to Ukraine to help a friend whose father has passed away in Odessa. My hope is while I'm in Ukraine, I might be able to offer a hand to other Ukrainians and also raise awareness of the ongoing plight of Ukraine in the novel way that my channel has covered Ukraine in the past. My Ukrainian residency has now expired, but because it expired after the war started, I'm still welcome inside Ukraine. Hey, so here I am waiting at the Ukrainian border. I've been here about an hour so far, slow, slow progress. What I find unbearable about borders is how they make the truckers, you see these truckers, just sort of sit around waiting. There's entire tailbacks of trucks just waiting. And this happens at borders all over the world. Jesse James makes his livelihood on the road as a trucker. But right now, he's not on the road. He's stuck, waiting for his trailer of goods to come across the border from Mexico. You, if those tires aren't moving, I don't get paid. Hundreds of trucks are stuck in a massive tailback, waiting for hours before they reach Bobrovniki, one of three crossing points into Belarus for heavy goods vehicles. I've been here since five in the morning, so now, well, I reckon I've got another five hours until I cross the Belarusian border. It's moving okay today, but a few days ago it was a nightmare. It was a 16-kilometer jam. It just seems like bureaucratic incompetence, but it's hard to say. Is it the Poles making us wait, or is it the Ukrainians making us wait? I think it's the Poles. Okay, you're ranting now, babe. But anyway, better put the camera away. They don't like people filming. No filming here. I had to show my Ukrainian residency ID to the border force to enter Ukraine. Once all checks were met, I was able to proceed on my way to my first stop, the edge of Lviv. Now the Ukrainian border isn't seeing the droves of refugees that I witnessed when I was last here last year, and the optimist in me hopes Russia will see the light and withdraw its troops from Ukraine in the near future. One can only hope. Hey, how's it going? So this is the first morning in Ukraine. I arrived last night, stood at the border, I think from about 4.30 until at least 9.30, 10 o'clock by the time we got through. And, oh, try, try not to piss off the locals here. Now, uh, just leaving Lviv, stayed on the outskirts of Lviv. There's a curfew in Ukraine and it starts at 12 o'clock midnight. So the deal is you have to be indoors at 12 o'clock time that we got to the hotel was at 11.30. Now we are literally on our way to Odessa. According to the Waze sat-nav, a little bit of product placement there, Waze. You can, you can sponsor me one day. The time of arrival is 18.07 and the current time is 9.18 in the morning. So we left at nine o'clock, having to contend with fairly busy roads. But as you see, Life is fairly normal. The, the only exceptions is we've seen a few sandbags on the sides of roads. We've seen those anti-tank barriers on the sides of roads. And it's a busy, busy part of Ukraine. Simple reason, a lot of the people from the east, they haven't left Ukraine. They've actually headed to the west. And the west of Ukraine is obviously Lviv. And they want to continue their normal lives where people speak their language and people are aligned with their culture. So a lot of people have stayed here. Let's see what we see along the way. Hopefully we won't get stopped too many times. There's potential checkpoints where I'm going to have to pull out my passports. Maybe. The complete difference between this time last year when I was uh, helping run supplies between Poland and Ukraine, there were multiple checkpoints as you came through from the border from Medica all the way into Lviv. Last night, there were zero checkpoints. After the very slow border, once we were through, there were no checkpoints at all. But let's see how the day progresses. We just passed an old checkpoint there, lots of sandbags, pretty much destroyed actually, not destroyed due to any conflict or anything, but destroyed just because it's no longer being used. What I thought was going to be a checkpoint was just construction workers building this brand new road. I think this is going to be a theme along the journey. Roads are fairly slow, top speed right now we can go as 56 miles per hour, which I believe is about, is that 80 kilometers? It's 90 kilometers. If Joe Biden was, say, incapable of completing a full sentence or 
mistook his sister for his wife. First stop, just had a nice brunch at the American Diner, just outside Hamonitsky. We're about 10 miles outside Hamonitsky. Now we're going to head off towards Odessa. Keep following us. I'm now between Venezia and Uman. You may remember my videos from Venezia, you may remember my videos from Uman, or Uman, however you like to say it. Very busy road. I have to say I don't recommend this place. I walked in, the uh, food was a Well, I didn't even bother. Hey, hey, don't eat the food! But one has to have a stop occasionally. So hopefully we'll find some food in the next place. There will be no more bad food, no more destroyers of my body. Really, really decent roads. And surprisingly, only a few checkpoints and not once have we been stopped. So, so far so good. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. So we've got four hours to go until we get to Odessa. And I think when I first started, the clock said I was going to get there for 10 past six. Now it's suggesting we'll be there for just under 10 past eight due to various stops. Coffee breaks, stop to this diner where we had eggs and bacon. That was brunch and I've been really, really surprised by the condition of the roads. The roads have been fantastic. I drove from London to Ukraine and that meant I passed through a number of countries. One of the countries that probably had the most disappointing of roads was Belgium of all places. Is it better to be a penguin or a Belgian? No, there's a penguin. A penguin? Oh, penguin, yeah, yeah. Yeah, penguin. <laughs> Belgium has decided that through its government policies that it's going to turn the Belgians into a minority by the year 2050. So they'd rather spend money on social welfare for new arrivals than the welfare of the people by keeping the roads in good condition. Whereas Ukraine, the roads are in fantastic condition. The interesting way of driving in Ukraine, where you often find it goes to two lanes, to one lane, and then it goes to one lane where most drivers are recommended they spend half the time in the bike lane or the side lane. That gives the faster vehicles the opportunity to, to overtake and that allows for the smooth flowing of traffic. And generally, with the odd exception, most people are pretty courteous. They haven't come across any super aggressive drivers. The trucks are courteous and most drivers are alert at least their surroundings but obviously the odd exception here and that as you get into the cities or the towns then driving becomes a little bit more problematic as we go into more congested areas but on these big open roads it's actually quite a pleasure to drive and listening to a podcast it's, it's a nice country to be driving in so hopefully when this country gets back into working order and, and Joe Public can come visit maybe there will be a lot more driving tours but all I will suggest is if you're a tourist coming to Ukraine once the war ends please don't bring your bad driving with you I don't want to see dodgy bad drivers uh, in Ukraine because so far the Ukrainians at least the ones here are driving really well a lot of bad drivers out there generally the speed is around about 90 kilometers an hour when you've got a long day ahead of you and I'm trying to get to Odessa before midnight it makes sense to just keep going you gotta keep going Ah uh, yes, now, <laughs> so there's a observation that occurred to me as soon as, as soon as I entered the country from the Polish border into Ukraine. I thought it was maybe just something we saw at the border, but it carried on relentlessly. There was petrol station after petrol station after petrol station. Here's your gas station. It seems in Ukraine it's very cheap to buy a little bit of land and to set yourself up as a a petrol station. Now I'm informed that the petrol is of dubious quality depending on which petrol station you go to. I think that's slightly cynical but I believe the, the local knowledge here that, that some petrol stations are better than others. Um, this is probably the, the classic point where I'd like to point out all of the petrol stations but of course at this minute in time when normally we see five at a time now there's no petrol stations in sight. But sometimes you'll see literally a petrol station every 100 meters, it's insane. Uh, one thing that's really, really uh, obvious driving through Ukraine are the many babushka, oh, but I'm saying the plural wrong here, but babushka or babushkas, 
uh, the grandmas that sell their fruits and veg at the side of the roads. There used to be a more of a, you'd see that common in most parts of Europe. It used to be fairly common where you would see honesty boxes outside of many houses in England where people would sell their eggs sell their fruits and veg uh, to the degree where you know even myself the, you know we'd always sell plums and our sort of whatever, apples and whatever we had extra in the garden we used to put them out and ha had an honesty box that continued it got to the stage where things were getting stolen haven't you heard about the rash of burglaries we've been having lately this is the general complaint about most things in the uk is the uk has become less homogenous the trust angle has gone down the toilet and also I guess people are not looking to make a tiny penny when it comes to selling you know a few plums here or a few chicken eggs but it's obviously needed in Ukraine you know people's pensions aren't what they could be so the Bavushka will go to the roadside and sell the chicken eggs and the apples and the watermelons and whatever else has been grown but if you get an opportunity to stop and you fancy a watermelon, then try and do it safely. It's quite difficult to stop on these roads. Some of these juggernaut lorries are hurtling past at an astronomical speed. But anyway, I'm looking for a place to eat now before we get to Odessa, so that will be the next stop. Not a bad location to have a road stop, eh? Not too bad at all, not too shabby at all. Fantastic. Oh, I do love it out here by the lake. A lovely, lovely dinner, but I was promptly reminded during dinner, suddenly had notifications on my phone. Basically says alerts from Odessa. Cruise missiles on the approaches to Venezia and Odessa regions. Well, Venezia is that way and Odessa is that way. So, are they, are they going above us? Are they something? Uh, and then people take shelter. So, you know, this is not a casual walk in the park. Um, now we've got to get somewhere before it gets to midnight. As I travel between the sunflowers, no blue skies here. We've got lightning to our right. Thunderstorms pretty much the last two days uh, as we've been traveling between Poland and Ukraine. Now on the final leg between uh, Uman and uh, Odessa, two hours, I think to get to Odessa. Seeing updates on my phone that cruise missiles are being fired from the Caspian Sea. Two got shot down above Venezia, which is exactly where we were probably less than two hours ago we were in Venezia. Well, slightly nerve-wracking in terms of maybe we won't be getting to Odessa tonight, depending on what the news is. I keep getting alerts on my phone, so let's just see. Hey, how's it going? So I made it to Odessa. I made it into the northern part of Odessa. I stayed in this beautiful building here. I have to say, I got here just before curfew, so around about 12 o'clock. Eventually got to sleep after having a, a whiskey after a long journey, no vodka, whiskey. And then three o'clock in the morning, the huge electrical storm combined with Iranian drones coming across from this direction, from the sea, which is over here, insane. So a little bit windy today. Uh, the plan is to head into the center of Odessa where I'm going to basically be checking out the cathedral that was bombed just a few days ago. A lot of people on my timeline are suggesting that it's all fake, it hasn't happened. Stay tuned, watch for the next video because I'm going to prove to you that this is a very real war and we still need to be standing with the people of Ukraine. Anyway, until next time, keep progressing. Похилилася чогось наша славна Україна зажурилася, а ми тую червону калину підіймемо, а ми нашу славну Україну хе-хе розвеселимо.